Well, well, well. Look at how things have turned out while the Ravens were in their bye week. You couldn't have asked for a better scenario for the Ravens to come back to. Things have gone haywire in the AFC, and we got to talk about it. Woo! Woo! So, Ravens flock, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are enjoying your day. What an amazing time to have a bye week for the Ravens. Everything going their way. I did not expect this. I'm going to be very honest. I didn't expect this. So the Ravens went into their bye week at 9-3 and three after taking down the L.A. Chargers on Sunday Night Football. We did not play Week 13 because we were too busy resting up. Now, heading into Week 13, we understood that the AFC was a tight race. And coming back you know, from our bye week, we understand it will continue to be a tight, uh, tight race, especially for the number one seed. However, things have changed. So, the Ravens were first in the AFC, and they were specifically first in their division, the AFC North, where you have two other teams that are competing for a playoff spot, but also on your trail to try to take away that first place spot in the AFC North. We went into the bye week with both the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers sitting at eight and uh, seven and four with a chance to go to eight and four. Now, heading into today's games, I thought both the Steelers and the Browns had a great opportunity to win. Looking at who they were matched up with, I thought it was a real good chance both these teams would be able to win. The Pittsburgh Steelers were matched up with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Arizona Cardinals are not exactly a great team. In fact, they are a really bad team. They are not good at all. They've gotten progressively worse, especially with um, how things have gone, you know, injuries and stuff. But they were not a good football team. Knowing how Pittsburgh likes to take advantage of these situations in some cases, I thought they would come out here and play a lot better. But I did give the Cardinals a, a puncher's chance to win this. Why? Because Kyler Murray is playing. And as long as the Cardinals have Kyler, they absolutely have a chance to win this game. It was a dirty, it was an ugly, it was a rainy day in uh, Heinz Field. That was not a good game. It was a nasty game. But I thought it was a game the Steelers would find a way to win. They did not. The Cardinals came to play, and they found ways to take advantage of the situation and, and be able to put a lot of pressure on the Steelers' defense, make plays in key situations, and put themselves in a position to where they can score. And boy, were they able to score. They were able to score before halftime to take the lead, and then coming out of halftime, they were still able to be productive. Now, uh, Kenny Pickett got knocked out. He got you know, hurt in this game. And you had Mitchell Trubisky come in, and boy, Trubisky didn't do anything for you. It was ugly. It was horrible. In fact, he turned the ball over in the worst possible situation, and the Cardinals just took advantage of it. So in a game I thought the Steelers would find a way to win, knowing their playoff situation, they, um, they lost. I was surprised to see that, but they lost, and they lost in a bad fashion. So they end up dropping a 7-4. That benefits the Ravens because right now the uh, Steelers have a better divisional record than us. And they beat us head-to-head. -head. So them being two games behind us absolutely benefits the Ravens. But wait, we're not done yet. It was a 4 o'clock matchup that had to be made. Now with this matchup, I absolutely expected this team to win. The Cleveland Browns were taking on the L.A. Rams. Now, I was saying the Rams right now, they're, they're somewhat back. Guys are healthy. You got Cooper Cup healthy there. Puka Nakua is still there. Matthew Stafford is back and healthy. They were starting to get healthy, and now they're trying to make a playoff push. So they're not just this normal team that's on the 500. They're a team that's got their pieces that's trying to make a legitimate playoff push. So I knew this game was going to be difficult for the Browns. However, I expected them to be able to find a way to pull off the victory here. What made this game very interesting is um, DTR was on concussion protocol, so Joe Flacco had to step up and step in and play in this game. It was weird watching Joe Flacco play in a Browns uniform. It was, uh, it was incredibly weird, but that's the universe we found ourselves in. So Joe Flacco goes out there for the Cleveland Browns, and honestly, Joe Flacco played the most perfect Joe Flacco game you are going to get. What do I mean by that? 
Uh, Joe Flacco started off making plays. He was taking shots down the field. Some moments he was checking the ball, but he was taking some shots down the field, connected with Elijah Moore, just making plays. And for much of the game, Joe Flacco was on the money. But you know, there's a time and a moment where Joe Flacco is just going to make a mistake. And it's not going to be like, oh, he's going to fumble the ball or, oh, he's going to like try to throw a check down and he gets picked off and take it for six. No, no, no. The mistakes we see from Joe Flacco is he's going to start getting all, you know, pumped up. He's going to start getting a little bit too comfortable and he's going to initiate an arm punt. Because he's just going to be like, hey, we got a chance here. Play action is perfect. I'm going to take a shot down the field. It's like, work. it's first down. You don't really need to take a shot right there. And maybe you want to wait. There's some coverage down. Nope, you're going to take that shot. You're going to take that shot, Flacco? And he takes that shot, and it's basically an arm punt interception. Boy, I do not miss those. I do not miss watching Joe Flacco throw arm punt interceptions. That was a perfect arm punt by him, to the T. The game was relatively close because both Stafford and, and Flacco were having great games. It was very weird. It felt like I was watching the early 2010s. It was just like very weird watching Joe Flacco go up against Matthew Stafford, and both of them were playing weird. I'm not playing weird, but playing, you know, great. It was kind of uh, kind of weird. Just kind of reminded me of the past. Anyway, they were both playing great, and the game was relatively close. We even got into the fourth quarter where um, Flacco let them down the field on a crucial drive. The score touchdown, and uh, it made it 2019, but they missed the extra point, and so it remained a one-point game. The Rams got the ball back, couldn't do nothing with it, and punted it back to the Browns. Now I'm thinking, okay, Cleveland's got a chance here. Uh, I don't expect Flacco to take them down the field and score a touchdown, but I think Flacco, Flacco can get them into field goal range, and you know the, the special teams will do the rest. That's not what happened. Like I said, you get that Joe Flacco arm punt, Completely changed the game. He throws it down the field, gets picked off on a beautiful arm punt interception, and then gets taken back deep into Browns territory. The Cardinals did not waste time capitalizing on that, and they scored a touchdown and basically made an eight-point game, and now you're starting to scramble and things are getting really bad for the Browns. You bring Flacco back out there on offense, and basically things just go bad to worse. That fourth quarter for the Cleveland Browns was a complete and utter collapse. And I cannot believe what happened um, given the scenario. It was it was just an utter collapse. It was a complete and utter collapse, and it cost the Browns the game. That fourth quarter performance by them offensively was terrible. And it just it ultimately ruined the momentum they had and destroyed their game. So the Browns, in a surprising fashion, takes a L against this Rams team. Which, again, they are a Rams team that is trying to actively compete for a playoff spot. And they are healthy again, or relatively healthy. So they are going to be a much um, tougher combatant to deal with. I'm saying that specifically because we got to take them on uh, coming out of the bye week. They're coming to Baltimore. So do not underestimate them. This is a team fighting for their playoff lives. They're not going to come out there and just lay down. They are trying to fight for a playoff spot. So keep that in mind, Baltimore. Anyway, Cleveland, they take a loss there. And they also drop to 7-5. So now your two biggest combatants that were fighting with you for first place in the AFC North have now taken a loss. Both of them are at 7-5. That means Baltimore has a two-game lead against both of them. Like I said, they do have the tiebreaker. Both Cleveland and Pittsburgh have the tiebreaker because Cleveland's got a better divisional record. They beat us head-to-head. I mean, not Cleveland. Pittsburgh's got a better divisional record. They beat us head-to-head. And Cleveland has a better conference record. So both of them have a tiebreak over us. The fact that they're now two games behind us gives us a little bit of space to work with, knowing that we don't have to be perfect. And we will still be able to hold on to first place in the AFC North. That normally would be it, but I got the surprises of all surprises. We take ourselves to um, Lambeau Field for Sunday Night Football between the Packers and the um, Chiefs. Now, I've spoken about this. The battle for the one seed is very interesting, but if we're talking about who has the best chance to take advantage of this, it was Kansas City because they had already taken down the the um, Dolphins and the Jaguars, and they don't face off against the Ravens. So as long as they just handle business and don't lose, nobody's taking the one seed from them. They have all the tiebreakers, and they don't play Baltimore, but Baltimore has a worse conference record than them. So everything was beneficial for the Chiefs. But it, second place on that list would be the Ravens. The Ravens get to play the Dolphins. The Ravens get to play the Jaguars. 
The Ravens have an opportunity here to where if they can win their games, all they would have to worry about is Kansas City. Now, due to the fact that they have a better conference record than we do, Baltimore would have to pray for some sort of loss so they could end up with a, a, a higher seed than Kansas City. Well, that prayer has been answered right off the bat. I thought this would happen next week against the Buffalo Bills, but it happened here. The Chiefs faced off against the Packers in Lambeau Field. It was a crazy, um, frustrating game. Once again, the offense for the Chiefs is not what you need it to be. Uh, Kelsey wasn't really playing at the highest, the highest levels. He was kind of a bit off. You know, I guess people are going to continue to use that, uh, you know, comparison of him, how he plays on the road this year versus how he's playing at home. And uh, if you take a look at how the, um, the, pa the, not the Packers, the Chiefs are playing on the road versus how they play at home, it's kind of different here. But, uh, yeah, the Chiefs had a struggle. Packers took it to them early on. They went into halftime with the lead. Coming out of halftime, they continued to put the pressure. It was a back-and-forth affair. Game was relatively close, but... Man, the Packers just came out to play. And Jordan Love had himself a nice game, man. It's, it's crazy to watch what was happening with this team here, considering the fact that early on in the season, it felt like there was no hope for the Packers. And now, all of a sudden, they find themselves in the playoff race due to this uh, victory. But, uh, yeah, the game was close. And, and as it starts to wind down, all of a sudden, Mahomes makes a mistake. He gets picked off, and it just feels like, wow, they're really about to lose this game. Yet, despite that, they still have one more chance to, to try to go down the field, score a touchdown, get a two-point conversion, and, you know, send it to overtime. And, yes, during that final drive, there was some controversial situations. They called a rough, not a rough, they called a unnecessary roughness call on the, on the Packers for a hit or a late hit, not even, not even unnecessary roughness, but a late hit on Mahomes against the Packers. And if you go back and look at the replay, he was still in bounds. That was a terrible call. They also proceeded to not call pass interference call. That was clear pass interference. Once again, the refs continue to be the refs. They continue to make mistakes. They continue to be awful. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the Packers defense was able to hold up, make a stop. The last um, play of the game, four down there, made a stop, got them out of there, batted the ball down, and got their victory and kept their playoff hopes alive. Now the Chiefs have lost their game. They are also 8-4. The doors have officially opened up for Baltimore. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The opportunity is there. Me personally, I'm only focused on the division. I'm not too keen on the number one seed. Would I love it? Absolutely. Who doesn't want to have the number one seed and get a, a, a bye week where you don't have to play in the wild card round? Who doesn't want that first round bye? You get extra rest. Obviously, he's a double-edged sword, but you would love to get the number one seed. So, obviously, it would be a nice cherry on the top. My focus was the division. But, guys, seriously, the path is opened up. It's all on you. The Ravens control their destiny. With that loss by Kansas City, Baltimore has free reigns to control their destiny. The Ravens have five games left. They have five games left. They're going to take on the Rams. They're going to take on the Jaguars. They're going to take on the Dolphins. They're going to take on the Niners. And they're going to take on the Steelers. Not in that particular order, but those are their final five games. Which, by the way, means that Baltimore, for their final five games, they're, they're now in their toughest stretch. Because every opponent they're facing moving forward has a record of 500 or better. So we're going to get a good indication of what this Ravens team is about with these next five games. But the, the path is open up for the Ravens. If they win these last final games, doesn't matter what happens around the AFC, Baltimore will get the number one seed. If they go 5-0, and oh, Baltimore will have the number one seed in the AFC. Thanks to that loss by uh, Kansas City, Baltimore no longer has to sit back and hope that Kansas City takes that loss. They just took that loss here. So the path is open up for the Ravens. Coming out of the bye week at 9-3, Currently sitting second in the AFC. Maybe we'll probably go down to third if Jacksonville is able to beat Cincinnati. The keys are in your head. You get to go up against the Dolphins head-to-head. -head. You get to go up against the Jaguars head-to-head. -head. You beat both of them. You get the tiebreak over both of them. If Baltimore is able to go 5-0 and to finish the season, highly unlikely, especially knowing the Niners are on your schedule. But if the Ravens are able to pull it off and go 5-0, and not only will they win the AFC North guaranteed, 
they will have the number one seed in the AFC in general. And there's nothing Kansas City can do to catch us at that point. If Baltimore does not lose a game from here on out, they will be the number one seeded team in the AFC. The path is open, Ravens. Let's see what you do with it. Balls in your court. Go out, come out of this bye week, and execute. We'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, I just want to speak about that because it was a wonderful Sunday for the Ravens. We didn't do anything, and yet everything went our way. AFC North race is looking towards, um, looking real good in terms of us winning it. It's now in towards our favor because we were able to have both those teams lose. And now the path to the number one seed is open up because Kansas City took it out. So things are getting very, very interesting. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching. And Ravens, time to head out of the bye week. You've got work to do. That's all I got, guys. I'm out of here. Peace.